spiel. Yo, yo, yo. So I just watched Get Out for the second time. And when I say the second time you watch it, the se it just blows your mind even more. So some of you may or may not know that I come from a background of film analyzing, right? I studied film and I thrive off of watching a good film and then just sitting there and picking at it and picking out little bits and pieces and doing research into it. Like I have a whole video about 90s hood films like Boys in the Hood on this channel. <laughs> like I go deep, okay? And because I can't just re-watch this film, I can't go as deep as I want to. But once I get that DVD, if I make a whole new video here, yeah, once I have that DVD, don't blame me because I can actually sit there, rewind, take notes, go back, but I've only gone to the cinema to watch it twice, so I can't really take notes in the cinema, I can't pause it, I can't do little bits of research that I want to do, so obviously, it's limited, but I have a lot to say. Now, at the start, it begins with that guy walking down the road, which you then find out is, what is his name? Anthony? I'm making that up. Anthony. Well, like I said, Anthony. All well, I know that later on he becomes Logan, right? You see him walking down and he's talking on the phone to his girlfriend, who you now know after you watch the film, is Rose, okay? So, anyways, the car pulls up and comes around and you hear that song Run, rabbit, run, rabbit, run, run, run. When I first heard that, I was like, she's. That, like, it startled me inside, you know? <laughs> that one song was just like, this is messed up. And then I find out that it was a nursery rhyme at one point as well. The song then turns into a nursery rhyme. Do you guys know what happens or what loads of these nursery rhymes are? A punch of racism, okay? Such as Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo. That jumping monkeys on the bloody bed. I can't remember how what the song is, the nursery rhyme was called. But anyways, this bloody one rabbits, yeah. When I heard it, I was like, this does not sound right. There's something eerie about this. And obviously I'm there trying to Google, but you can't really find too much to do with rabbits and this song. But I did come across this one excerpt. And you do know, actually, this one thing I've realised, that a lot of the times when people refer to animals, it tends to link or some kind of correlation or some kind of connotation or some kind of racial slur in some way towards black people. I don't know how they make it work yet, but I found this one article. Cohen shows how racist epithets, epithets? often rely on myths and stereotypes about black people. To illustrate his argument, he examines the case of the jungle bunny, a monster which he claims sprang into linguistic life and spread or bred until it became the most popular term of abuse directed by white working class youth against black people. Cohen goes on to argue that this particular epithet, quote, links a popular racist myth, bra brackets, <laughs> Blacks come from the jungle, close bracket, to popular sexual fantasies that blacks breed like rabbits to force a racist misrecognition to force a racist misrecognition blacks are animals that the insult also contains the embedded injunction that blacks should go back to the jungle where they belong. Now, let me just find myself. You know this ring light life it's not good okay now keeping that in mind right the song is saying run rabbit run rabbit run 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 this person is about to be chased they're about to be strangled so they pass out so they can then be all kind of madness happen to the hypnosis surgery all kinds of madness right the guy that comes out of the car he's driving a white car comes out with a black shield on his face what do you even call that Hooded thing, coming looking like the bloody KKK. Nobody can't tell me that they're not looking like the KKK. Why is he coming with a mask on his head? Hmm? Singing these racist songs. Tell me. I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah, you guys can have your own little, you know, say about it. But this is how I analysed it. It was complete and utter racism from the opening of that one beautiful long shot when there was only one cut when he was put in the trunk of the boot, the boot of the car. That one long shot, right, just sets the whole entire mood of the film. You watch it like, yo, this is madness. And the thing is, it's real. People get abducted. I've got a whole other video on organ harvesting. If you want to watch that, I'll put it here. But that's a whole other story. 
The second point that I have was only pointed out to me today when I went to go watch it again with my mum and my brother. My mum, who is, I would say, fluent, it was her first language, who is fluent in Swahili, yeah. she turns to me and was like, they're singing in Swahili. And I was like, really? What are they saying? She was saying that it basically means run. Brother, run. Listen to your answers and run away. Get out of where you are going. That is basically my own translation of what it says, right? This is the song. If you watch the film, you know exactly what song I'm talking about. They play it throughout the film. The beginning, there's little sections in the middle and at the end. This song played, when she told me what it meant, I'm the kind of person, yeah, when I find out things, there was one Spy Kids film and the thumbs were singing a song. It sounded all jolly, jolly, happy, happy. And then when they played it backwards, they're like, help us, save us, he's a madman, he's a madman. That stuck with me until my adult life. Until today, that kind of stuff freaks me out. It's the psychological things here in films that play with your mind. When she told me what that song meant, I was like, oh, that's creeping me out even more. This film is deep. Now, I when I heard it, I was like, this is clearly an African tune. Like, I'm feeling it. It connected with me, not knowing that the song was from my motherland, from the Swahili land of Kenya and Tanzania, wherever else speaks Swahili. Yes, that song, you, Jordan Peele, are a genius. You guys know that Jeremy is one hell of a creepy person. Rose's brother creeped me out throughout the whole film. Like, I applaud the actor. I applaud him because his performance was impeccable. Like I was, from when he first came in, I was like, this guy is weird. And when they're at the dinner table and he's talking to, to Chris and he's asking him, can you fight? Like, have you ever been in a fight? And that, that one line straight away made me think of slave fighting. And they used to get black people on the plantations to fight against each other to see who was stronger or a form of entertainment people like to watch black people fight the same way they have the ufc i'm pretty sure they mentioned ufc in it as well the same way they have boxing all this thing about putting them on a stage or in an arena to fight or to fight to the death they have an obsession with black men's strength don't ask me why but they love it and also later on in the film, let me just skip a bit forward to when um, Chris is sitting in the chair and he's watching the TV screen and um, the Armitage grandfather, whatever his name is, comes on and he's like, with our determination and your natural abilities kind of thing. <laughs> so you, the whole basis of the film is to get their soul or their, their mind into our bodies. So they're trying to say that is perfection. The way they're, they're determined, they think that boy, girl, boy, they are determined. I think I mentioned it in the film about um, white supremacy and how, how it came about and how they just used by force, they made themselves climb to the top. Do you know how much determination that takes? I'm, I, I've got to hand it to you guys, yeah. If you're a white person watching this, you are determined. And we, as black people, need to be on that same level. Like, you know, we've been told throughout our childhood growing up that we have to work 10 times harder, and it's true. But there's, like, it feels like there's something instilled in some of these white people. Like, how are they? <laughs> they have that drive, right, that some of us are lacking. We have the natural ability. But because of mental slavery, because of all this, we are like a lot, it takes a lot more for us to get there mentally. We have the capability, I'm here preaching, we have the capability, but to harness that determination is hard, especially when you're being put down on a constant day-to-day -day level, like, it's difficult. But yeah, this is, how, this is what the film made me think, guys. <laughs> on that level of, yes, slave fighting, and having he kept saying like if you trained if you had that that bit of you in you you could be a beast and it's true if we had what it takes to actually connect to our physical abilities mental abilities if we just were able to harness that part of us we would be on top where we are meant to be 
I could I could preach like I can go into the whole granddad run scene I can go into the picking cotton in the chair look there's so much I could touch on I can touch on the foreshadowing or when he says yeah that I don't want to be chased on a lawn by a shotgun look I'm here just moving like, there's a lot to talk about but I'm gonna just give you this one last bit right and that is the deer look I was sitting there thinking what has this deer got to do with anything there has to be a connection it keeps showing this deer when he first hits the deer when they first hit the deer the deer hits them however it works who threw the deer on I don't know how it worked okay but from that first thing and you can see the connection that Chris had with the deer I read online somewhere that it's about um the fact that his mum was killed by a hit and run so he has that connection but yeah he, that is partly true partially true but there was that scene where he first meets Rose's parents and Dean, her dad, talks about how the, these deer is like, I'm glad you killed one of them. I'm glad you hit one of them. They're coming in, they're messing up our ecosystem, they're pests. Like, we need to kill all of them. And that made me just think, yo, we're coming in, we're messing up your working system. We're getting killed and laying on the street. We're not, we might not be bit getting run over, but we're getting shot down and there's one less of us on the street and the way I saw it the deer is just once again animals using animals to link back to black people why is it that we're seen as this animalistic character I don't understand but the deer to me just represented how black lives are seen right and the fact that when Rose hit the deer, didn't show as much affection as Chris did. He went up to the deer, he looked at it and you can see that there was something there. He was traumatised by it. There was this connection that Rose couldn't feel and clearly she was messed up in the head anyways. But that's how I see it. Yo, Jordan Peele, if I could meet you, I would. I would love to just pick your brain about every little thing. Just tell me about all the little Easter eggs that you put in this film because I'm going to watch it again. And again, I'm going to make up the DVD. I went cinema twice. I paid twice to see this film, okay? <laughs> That's how much I love it. And if you haven't seen it, which you should, but you definitely should see it twice if you've only seen it once because there's a lot more that you notice when you watch it again. Anyway. I think that's me. So much more to say, but let's have conversation in the comment section below, guys. Peace, love, and life. See you next time.